Hey, everybody, it's Jeff from New York, and I'm here in fabulous Las Vegas, going to go over all the things going on in this wonderful town during the month of October. October is a great time to visit Las Vegas, and there's so much going on this month here. There's lots going on with the hotels and casinos, lots of new restaurants and uh, venues and Lots of parties going on for Halloween and lots of things going on with entertainment and sports and well, you name it, there's a lot going on here in town and I want to share it all with you. Before we get into all the fun details of October here in Las Vegas, do me a favor, just take a look down. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, please click on that subscribe button. Doing so really does help the channel out. If you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to support the New York channel, then click on that super thanks button. It does support the channel and it does get you a shout out on a future video. Shout out to Wise Malik who left a super thanks on my last Atlantic City video, the Boardwalk premiere. And I do appreciate your support, guys. Now, let's see what's going on in Las Vegas during the month of October. We'll kick off the Las Vegas October events with the Bellagio's Conservatory. They just set up their fall display and it's called the Garden of Time. Wander through the enchanted forest where time stands still and encounter a symphony of autumn splendor. Amidst the Garden of Time stand petrified wooden statues of woodland creatures captured in an eternal pause. Experience the floral brilliance and pumpkins where time seems to hold its breath allowing you to revel in the timeless enchantment that is the Bellagio Conservatory. The autumn display is the shortest of the year. It's going away November 9th when they're going to start to set up the holiday display. The Versailles Tower, which used to be part of the Horseshoe Hotel and Casino and became part of the Paris Hotel and Casino during the Horseshoe Bally's uh, conversion, uh, the pedestrian bridge to that tower has finally opened up and just in time for the fall season. Uh, it's quite a walk from the registration area all the way to the Versailles Tower, but now they built this pedestrian bridge that's supposed to make life a little bit easier, but from what I understand, it's still quite a walk, even with that pedestrian bridge. There's also complaints from customers about how far it is to the pool area over at the Paris Hotel and Casino if you're staying at the Versailles Tower, which again was part of Horseshoe. Many customers say they feel like they're staying at the Horseshoe, but paying Paris prices. Now I know they built a, a small registration area if you're staying at the Versailles Tower. It's only got like two kiosks and uh, it's usually not manned from what I understand. So hopefully they'll get that up and running and uh, at least registration and checking in will be a lot easier. But again, quite a walk from that tower to uh, the Paris Hotel Casino and all of its amenities. But again, the good news is the pedestrian walkway has finally opened for the fall season. Meanwhile, over at the Flamingo Hotel and Casino, things are gearing up to open up two new restaurants, Gordon Ramsay's Burger, which would be his second burger location here on the Las Vegas Strip, as well as Lisa Vanderpump's new restaurant, Pinkies. Both restaurants were slated to open by the end of this year. It looks like Gordon Ramsay Burger is about ready to open. I believe it's in the old uh, bird bar area of the Flamingo. Uh, Pinkies is a little further behind and probably won't open until the beginning of 2025, but uh, you never know. Sometimes when they fall behind like that, they uh, speed things up a little bit and both might be open by the end of the year. In any event, can't have enough of Gordon Ramsay burgers on the Las Vegas Strip. The best burger, as far as I'm concerned, on the Las Vegas Strip and the winner of several burger challenges here on the New York Channel. Gordon's other burger location is at Planet Hollywood, while Lisa has three other locations, well actually two other locations, three including this one, uh, one across the street at Caesars Palace, one at Paris, which has been open now for, uh, I'm going to say about a year, year and a half, and uh, this new one, which hopefully will be opening up soon at the Flamingo. All of these properties, by the way, run and operated by Caesars Entertainment. I suppose the biggest news for October here in Las Vegas is coming from the place that, well, nobody's visiting anymore. 
The Tropicana Hotel and Casino's days are numbered. Come October 9th, it will be imploded at 2.30 in the morning. Of course, as with all Las Vegas implosions, this one's promising to be quite spectacular. Once those towers come down, there's going to be a 555 drone display. They're becoming quite popular, these drone displays, even in Atlantic City. Uh, they're also going to follow that up with a fireworks display. Of course, all this is starting at 2.30 in the morning, which is quite frankly when Vegas always does these implosions, it seems. And this one's a little more stricter because of its location or proximity to the uh, Harry Reid Airport. There's a few hotels surrounding this uh, Tropicana property, including the Oyo, which was the old Hooters. They're sold out for the evening. And from what I understand, the MGM Grand, the Excalibur, as well as the New York, New York Hotel and Casino are all pretty much almost sold out, and they're asking $1,000 plus for each room. The House of Blues Foundation Room over at Mandalay Bay is completely sold out. They're having a big implosion party. So if you happen to be in town on the southern end of the Strip on October 9th, just look up and you'll see a piece of iconic Las Vegas history come down. Of course, what becomes of this Tropicana property is still up in the air. It was uh, supposed to become a new stadium for the Oakland A's, but again, nothing concrete has turned out from those plans. As a matter of fact, the Oakland A's have left Oakland and they're now playing in a minor league ballpark somewhere in California and uh, they're simply known as the Athletics right now. We'll see what happens in the near future, hopefully. The area in front of the Horseshoe, the Grand Bazaar Shops, has pretty much been a pedestrian nightmare for a couple of years now. It started with the conversion of Bally's to Horseshoe and then the uh, building of Old Red, Blake Shelton's new uh, honky-tonk here in Las Vegas that's become a huge success. Well, the construction nightmare continues with the construction of a new restaurant called Bottled Blonde, which is underway and should be completed by the spring of this coming year. Bottled Blonde is being constructed directly south of Old Red. If you're not familiar with Bottled Blonde, they have several locations around the country, including Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Scottsdale, and now uh, Las Vegas in the near future. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, they are kind of like Hooters, but instead of wings, they have pizza. Something tells me they're going to do really good in this location. And again, construction continues through October. Hopefully this place will be open by the spring. In more restaurant news, over at the Cosmopolitan, good old Holstein's is gone. That's right, Holstein's, known for their burgers and even more so for their milkshakes, has gone to the slaughterhouse. Coming this spring in its place is the Mina Modern Mexican Restaurant. But don't feel bad for the owners of Holstein's, it's the same owners who are just rebranding the place. Instead of burgers, you're going to get Mexican food. Instead of milkshakes, you're going to get tequila. I think it's a good idea, this whole rebranding thing. You can get a burger pretty much anywhere in Cosmo. There's lots of choices, but not too many places you can grab a taco and shot of tequila. But uh, the question remains, where are you going to get a good milkshake now in that building? Right across the street at Miracle Mile Mall, part of the Planet Hollywood complex, there's been a lot of renovations going on for the past couple of years, and they're just finishing up on a brand new food court. They've really done a fantastic job on this place uh, as far as Miracle Mile Mall in the past couple of years, inside and out, and they're putting the finishing touches now, and this Miracle Mile Food Hall, is what they're calling it, is just about complete. No tenants yet, hopefully there'll be tenants by the end of the year, but uh, they're just about done here and the place really does look fantastic. And across the street Caesars Palace is also working on their food hall as well. The only place that's really open now is DeFaro's and they're not going to be around too much longer. That's the pizzeria place that quite honestly I never cared for. Even the Starbucks is in a temporary location. Everything else is closed. Gone will be Crepes and More, Tiger Walk and Ramen, and Taco. They will be permanently closed. From what I understand, Bobby's Burgers and uh, the Halal Guys as well as Starbucks aren't going anywhere. And some new places will include Monk Bar, which is Korean food. Uh, Bobby V Pizzeria will be uh, replacing DeFaro's, thank goodness. 
and a new place called Tortazo, which is a Rick Bayless place. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be either Mexican or barbecue. So as you can see, lots of restaurant activity along here on the Las Vegas Strip. couple things I wanted to mention with regards to the rewards uh, cards here in Las Vegas. The Venetian is now going to tier match uh, October 1st through the end of the year. So if you're in town, I suggest you head over there with your uh, highest tiered card, whether it be an MGM card or a Caesars card or some other card. Bring it over to the Venetian and they will tier match that for you and you get some nice comps. In other rewards cards news in October, uh, you can now use your Bally's rewards card over at the Palms here in Las Vegas. I think this was a smart move by Bally's since they currently don't have a hotel or casino here in town. Uh, they do own the property that the Tropicana is sitting on, but we don't know what's going to become of that, as I said earlier in this video. So if you're in town and you have a Bally's rewards card, well, now there is a place you can use it, the Palms. One thing to keep in mind with this cross promotion, if you could actually call it that, is it doesn't work the other way around. Your Palms card will not work at Bally's locations, but again, your Bally's card will work at the Palms here in town. So if you're a dedicated Bally's gambler and you're in town, you now have a place to rack up some more tier points and comps. Don't know how long this promotion is going to run, but uh, I will keep you guys posted. Work is continuing on the Brightline West High Speed Railway that's going to connect Las Vegas to Southern California. This will be the first true high speed passenger rail system in the nation. The 218 mile all electric high speed rail service will include a flagship station in Las Vegas with additional stations in Apple Valley, Hesperia, and Rancho Cucamonga. At speeds up to 200 miles per hour, trains will take passengers from Las Vegas to Rancho Cucamonga in just 2 hours and 10 minutes, twice as fast as you can do it by car. The Rancho Cucamonga station will connect to Southern California's regional Metro Link service, allowing for seamless connectivity between downtown Los Angeles and beyond. Now, I know they're working on this, and I have no idea how long it's going to take them to complete it, but I do know it's costing billions and billions of dollars. Brightline, by the way, currently has rail service in Florida, and this project between Las Vegas and California will be called Brightline West. We're going to leave the strip for a moment and head downtown Las Vegas, where the El Cortez, one of the older hotels and casinos here in Las Vegas, is undergoing some heavy renovations in their casino, restaurants, and lounges. Just a block or two from the Fremont Street experience is the El Cortez, which is in the East Fremont area of Las Vegas, right across the street from the Container Park. Of course, the Fremont Street experience and the East Fremont area is covered on lots of videos here on the New York channel if you want to check those out. Some of the changes coming to the El Cortez is a roulette-themed bar right in the middle of the casino. Another new bar will be called the Show Bar. It will feature a Art Deco feel to it, and it will uh, feature some old-time movies when there's not live acts on the stage. There'll also be a new restaurant called Hot Nudes. No, it's not what you're thinking. It's uh, noodles. It's going to be an Asian restaurant, as well as a new High Limit area. Lots going on here at the El Cortez. It should all be completed by the beginning of next year, so if you're in the area, make sure to check it out. As long as we're downtown, I might as well mention the Neon City Festival, which isn't in October, it's in November. It's actually November 22nd through the 24th. I'll cover that in another video, uh, I guess, come November. But uh, they had some changes in the lineup, and I thought I'd talk to you about it for a moment. Step into a whole new world of excitement at downtown Las Vegas' inaugural Neon City Festival. That's right, it's the first year this festival's happening. This first-of-its-kind free all-ages celebration of music, food, and art transforms the heart of Las Vegas into a sprawling open-air playground. 
This new event sounds like it's going to be pretty cool and it focuses on music, food, and art. One of the headliners, Macklemore, was dropped from the Neon City Festival because of some things he said about bad things he said about America in another festival in California. As soon as that happened, well, they dropped him from this show, and I'm glad they did. And uh, still lots of headliners coming here. I think it's going to be a fantastic show. It's the first time they're doing it here in Las Vegas. I'm looking forward to it. And in other entertainment news, lots of entertainers here in town during the month of October. We'll go through them quickly right now. Adele has just a few shows left. She'll be at the Caesars Coliseum October 25th and 26th. Barry Manilow continues his residency at the Westgate. He'll be there October 17th and 19th. Brad Paisley at the Wynn October 18th and 19th. Carlos Santana at one of my favorite venues, the House of Blues over at the Mandalay Bay, October 30th and 31st, Halloween. Carrie Underwood continuing her residency at Resorts World, October 16th through the 26th. Earth, Wind & Fire at the Venetian, October 9th through the 19th. Also at the Venetian Foreigner, October 25th through the 30th. Garth Brooks at the Caesars Coliseum, October 3rd through the 13th. Keith Urban at the Fountain Blue, October 4th through the 12th. The ultra-cool Lenny Kravitz at the Dolby Live Theater at the Park MGM, October 18th through the 26th. Lionel Richie at the Wynn, October 9th through the 12th. Maroon 5 at the Dolby Live Theater, Park MGM, October 2nd through the 12th. New Edition at the Wynn, October 30th. Over at Planet Hollywood at the Back Theater, Breaking Benjamin, Stained, and Daughtry, October 15th. Eagles continue at the Sphere, October 11th and 19th. Tony Braxton playing the Cosmo, October 18th and 19th. And of course, lots more entertainers will be continuing their residencies here in Las Vegas during the month of October. And speaking of Las Vegas in October, a quick note about the weather. The average high at the beginning of the month right now is about 90 degrees, but at the end of the month, the average high is about 70. Big drop during the month of October. And at night, it can go close to 50 degrees or even chillier than that. So keep that in mind when you're packing for Las Vegas. It's one of those crazy months. I've been to uh, Vegas in October. Uh, You just don't know how to dress. You dress completely different in the daytime than you do in the evening. Also, keep in mind a lot of the hotels and casinos will be closing their pools during the month of October. So the pool season's coming to an end. Very few hotels and casinos have their pools open. All the pools in Las Vegas are outdoors, and it does get chilly during the wintertime. So they are closed and will be closing during this month. So again, I've been to Las Vegas several times during the month of October, and I've been there on several Halloweens as well. And take it from me, there is no place like downtown when it comes to Halloween night. So uh, take that into consideration. If you're at the Strip, take a trip downtown because that's where it's at on October 31st. The Fremont Street experience is just bustling with people dressed to the nines as far as Halloween costumes are concerned. You really don't see that much on the Strip. Uh, So coming down here, you really see all the Halloween costumes. And if you don't have a costume, that's fine. A lot of people don't want to pack a costume. Uh, I don't dress up for Halloween when I'm in Las Vegas, but uh, lots of people do. And sometimes you just need a funny pair of glasses or something like that if you want to feel like you're doing something special for the evening. Lots of live entertainment and lots of parties. If you'd like to attend a Halloween ball, there's plenty of those around town. And whenever you're in doubt, always ask the hotel concierge wherever you're staying. But keep in mind, they're paid to recommend certain events. So uh, keep that in mind as well. Your best bet, actually, is to either ask the dealers or or a wait staff or an Uber driver. They know the best places to go, and they're not being paid by anybody. Another great idea is to hop in a cab and head over to uh, Area 15. That place is pretty freaky all year round, but during Halloween, it's exceptionally freaky. And it's a great idea. Good way to start the evening and then head on over to the Fremont Street Experience. Area 15, fittingly renamed Scaria 15 on Halloween. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about Area 15, just check out those videos here on the New York channel.
Alrighty, let's take a moment and discuss sports in Las Vegas during the month of October. And well, during the month of October, we are once again setting up for the F1 race. While the F1 race itself is in November, its impact is felt as early as September and definitely in October when grandstands are being built and roads are being blocked off. And well, it's the same thing happening all over again this year. I said it last year and I'm probably going to say it again this year. I think this race does more harm than good to the city of Las Vegas. Just expect a lot of traffic in October and a lot of people aren't concerned about traffic because they're not driving a car but keep in mind that your Uber driver is avoiding the Las Vegas Strip because of the traffic so it might be hard to get a ride anywhere. And the buses that I usually use to get around town are completely thrown off their schedule during the uh, preparation for the race. Your best bet is as far as I'm concerned is the monorail. The sidewalk in front of the Bellagio fountains is already closed off so you're not going to have a good view of the fountains. And that of course creates more pedestrian traffic on the other side of the Las Vegas trip where if you remember at the beginning of this video I said there's a lot of restaurant construction going on. But let's try to completely forget about F1 and think about other sports here in town. Allegiant Stadium and the T-Mobile Arena are bustling with a lot of pedestrian traffic during the month of October between the Raiders playing as well as the Golden Knights. This particular park I'm in right now, the MGM Park, goes crazy right before a Golden Knights game and uh, after a Golden Knights game as well. Lots of people stopping off for drinks before the game and possibly dinner after the game and the uh, park is loaded with restaurants and bars. So keep that in mind, this place is going to become very crowded during a Golden Knights game. That being said, let's take a look at the Golden Knights busy schedule during the month of October. These of course are all home games. The Knights vs. the Avalanche, October 3rd and 9th. The Knights vs. the Blues, October 11th. The Knights vs. the Ducks, October 13th. The Knights hosting the Flames, October 28th. Knights vs. the Kings, October 22nd. Knights vs. the Senators, October 25th. And the Knights hosting the Sharks, October 5th and 26th. So as you can see, the Knights have a busy October schedule, but let's not forget those Raiders over at Allegiant Stadium. Raiders vs. the Steelers, October 13th. And Raiders vs. the Kansas City Chiefs, October 27th. Hmm, I wonder if Taylor Swift is going to be there. Also at Allegiant Stadium, there's something brand new and pretty cool. It's called the Masquerade Tailgate Experience. It's kind of like a uh, pre-game party. They have a pirate-themed bar. There's carnival games for the kids. There's a DJ booth. Uh, the DJ booth is actually part of a pirate ship, a 40-foot-long pirate ship. It's all-inclusive. The food and the drinks, it's $200. Not a bad deal considering uh, how much those tickets cost you. So it's a brand-new experience. I think it looks really cool, and I think other stadiums are going to pick up on this and maybe take off with it themselves. Well, that's it for now, guys. If you're traveling to Las Vegas in October, have fun, good luck, and be safe.